Hello, friends, and welcome to this midweek devotion. It's good to be with you again. It's been one of those days. I woke up this morning to turn on my news feed, discover that a rainstorm had hit not in Western Canada like we've been hearing all week and watching the devastating uh, pictures of washouts and bridges down. This time the pictures were from Eastern Canada, from Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. Pictures again of rain causing devastation. The only word that can be used to describe the scenes that we're seeing, not only on our Western coast, as well as on our Eastern coast is the word miserable. It is one of those words that we use to describe sin and the brokenness that results from the fall. We don't know why we're experiencing these things on our West Coast and on our East Coast. People talk about global warming and increased severity of wind and storm events. But this word miser miserable or misery is a good one to describe what happens because of sin and its effects. One person described and used that word misery to talk about the pain and suffering that comes from sin, the fallout that comes from the fall. Among the fallen world's miseries and disorders are estrangement, uh, de death, and the disorders that we see in our world. In thinking about what sin does to us, what sin does to our relationship with God and our relationship with each other and our relationship with creation and even ourselves, uh, that word misery was explored by one author that I want to use for today's devotion. His name is Neil Plantiga. He writes, some time ago, the news told the story of a man who shot four teenagers in New York. The man was on his way home from work on a subway train. Four teenagers surrounded him. First, they asked him for the time. Then they asked him for a match. And finally, they asked him for $5. Sure, the man said, I'll give you five dollars and pulled out a gun and shot the four youths. And one of those youths is still paralyzed from a damaged spinal cord. One is in the or and the other three are all are in the hospital. When the man who did the shooting gave himself up, he discovered that he had become a hero. People sent him money and promised him legal help. Reporters said the man had done something terribly necessary. Strangers wrote and said they would have done the same thing. People, after all, are sick of young thugs who hassle them in public places. Neil Plantinga tells, uh, goes on and, and writes a bit later, more of the story came out. The subway hero had been mugged once before and his muggers had gotten away or gotten off with a small jail sentence it angered and frustrated that man so much that he bought a gun carried it illegally and waited for a chance to use it if the law would not take revenge on bullies and thieves then he would have to do it himself does anyone hear the echo of the news story from milwaukee surrounding a young man young boy named rittenhouse Meanwhile, as it turns out, all four of the teenagers, again, back to our story, had been wanted by police. Three of them were carrying sharpened screwdrivers, all had mugged before. They were da uh, dangerous young people. More store of that story who uh, has come out. That young man who was paralyzed, he comes from a, a Christian home. He comes from a home where his own father had been killed by muggers years before, so the boy's mother tried to raise him on her own. Soon she ran into trouble. The young boy began to hang out with the wrong kind of crowd, with street thugs and gangs. He became a thief, and one day he got himself shot on a subway. Neil writes that this situation is full of misery. Misery is the pain, the suffering, the wretchedness that comes from sin. Misery is the fallout from the fall. The reason we hate sin and it, the misery that results is that we know 
their opposites. We long for their opposites. We know what's right and joyful. We know what's good and wholesome. When God says, do not see, steal, do not kill, we know that Jesus Christ himself says, love your neighbor as yourself. We pray the prayer, thy kingdom come with longing in our hearts for a world that has been made right. And at Christmas, during the season of Advent, this season of anticipation, we long for in the midst of our own sorrow, in the midst of our own misery, we long for a world that has been made right by God. And that becomes our prayer. It becomes the blessing at the end of each, uh, each of our Sunday mornings, that blessing, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he lift his face towards you. May you experience his wholeness, his delight, his shalom, even in the midst of lives that sometimes experience sorrow. And so may the Lord bless you. And we will see you again on Sunday. Thanks for listening.